Hello, Hofstra fans, and welcome to another edition of the W.B. Mason Coaches Report right here on GoHofstra.com. I'm Mark Wiener, joined by head coach Joe Mihalik of the Hofstra Pride men's basketball team. Coach, how are you? Doing great, doing great. Getting ready, another, getting ready for another big week and, uh, you know, just trying to move forward. Well, let's look past to your 2-0 week. I'm sure you're happy to look past to it. Uh, the first, the Northeastern game, 96-92, to uh, three-overtime game, one that you said was an epic game, probably the best I've ever seen in person. I mean, uh, clearly you know that was the type of game that somebody had to win, somebody had to lose. I'm sure you're happy you're on the right side of that. Well, there's no doubt about that because it's, it, it's one of those games, not just because it was three overtimes, where you, you feel like you won it three times and you feel like you lost it three times. And at the end, to come out on top uh, was really gratifying. As you said, it was an epic game, and, and it's because both teams played so well. I mean, it wasn't like a clunker where nobody could make a shot, and even with three overtimes, the score was 68-63. You know, it was, a, it was a heck of a game. Both teams really, really playing well. Two really good teams. We were on the road. Boy, it's, it's as good a win as, as we've had. And then on Sunday, it was a game that was delayed actually a day because of the snowstorm. 91-64, to you guys take down William & Mary. Another just fantastic effort by your team. It really was, and, and I think I said after the game, uh, I remember looking up at the scoreboard with four minutes to go. I think about four minutes to go in the first half. It was 31 to 22. We were down nine. William and Mary was playing well. We were not, uh, to their credit. And Wanya Green had two fouls and hadn't been in the game for for about eight minutes. So, you know, and then I, I, I watched it on the plane last night. Uh, you know. Uh, Miraculously, we were up one at halftime. I don't. I'd have to almost watch it again to say how. But and then the second half, we just, uh, you know, just took it play by play, offensive end, defensive end, and and uh, the attrition set in. And before you know it, we were up. We had a pretty good lead. You mentioned Wanya Green didn't play much in the first half, but ended up with 30 points. He's named the CBS Sports Player of the Week, the CAA Player of the Week. I mean, I feel like he's getting better, and we already know he's one of the best players in the CAA. Well, I told somebody this morning, I think Wanya would, would tell you the same thing. In, in years past, his Achilles heel would be getting two fouls in the first half and getting a little bit down or, or, or letting it affect him mentally uh, or missing a couple shots and letting that affect him, and, and he's past that. He's past that. He's really playing like a star. I've, I've challenged him to, you know, I've even said to him, I probably used the wrong word. I said, don't be afraid to be the star. And afraid's not the word because he has no fear in him. But I think it was don't be reluctant to be the star. It's okay. It's okay that you that you got to take some shots, and and he did that the other day. I mean, he was. I mean, he was he was terrific. He was, you know, and, and it's his line was 30 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, or the other way around, four steals. But the most incredible one was zero turnovers. I mean, it's when you're any point guard that doesn't have a turnover, that's that's an incredible thing. There was one negative for the team. It was Brian Bernardi. I mean, the last couple of games he's been shooting under 20% from beyond the arc. And we know how hard he works. We know that he's putting the effort in. But what do you tell a player like that when he's in such a slump? Well, a couple of things. You know, uh, you, you always look to see if there's something wrong mechanically. And there's nothing wrong mechanically. Uh, another thing you do is you, you, you make sure that, you know, like Brian's such an incredible worker. You make sure he's not overdoing it because he could. Um, but the other things are keep shooting. I mean, if he has a shot and he doesn't take it, that's, that's worse than taking a shot and missing it. So, I mean, but, but lastly, and I, I told him this yesterday, uh, I watched him, and he didn't shoot bad. The shot ball just didn't go in. If you watch his shots, the release was good, his posture was good, his body language was good. You know, he used his leg. The shots were right there. He didn't shoot it bad. It didn't go in. I mean, so which means he's missing by inches. And then all that takes is another, you know, another couple shots. One or two are going to go down. He's going to be fine. I mean, but he didn't shoot the ball bad. He took ten shots. I would say seven of them were, were really good shots. Didn't go in, but really good shots. And you, you can shoot the ball good and not have it go in. And and he did take. He did shoot it good. So, you know, he's. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about Brian Bernardi. This week, another tough week. Elon and then at Drexel, first that Elon game. Last time out again in North Carolina, 80 to 76. It was a very tough game. What do you remember from that matchup? We were lucky to win. I mean, we really were. We were lucky to win. It's a, it's a team that can really shoot the basketball. They're, they're an excellent offensive team. You know, they, 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 Coach Matheny just he coaches his brains out. I mean, it's a, every dribble, every pass is there's a plan. Uh, you know, we really uh, we really got to be be ready to to defend better than we did down there. I don't I don't know if we will. I hope we can. Uh, and then they'll do, still do some things on defense that are that are that are we got to try to solve too. You know, one of the toughest things psychologically, I think, to do, John Beeline always said this, was in league play, to win a game on the road, 
and then win again when they come back to your place because, you know, uh, deep, deep, deep in the back of, of the players' minds as well. We beat them at their place, I'm sure we'll beat them at home. And, you know, that's, that's dangerous because that's certainly, uh, that's certainly not the case. So home road split this week. How do you get two wins and stay in first place in CAA play? Well, you know, obviously it's one game at a time. I mean, we've told our guys to, to put the blinders on and have tunnel vision and all those other little cliches we could come up with. Um, you know, we, uh, we uh, are only, and we're only doing that, just thinking about one game at a time. So, you know, but it's, it's, it's with us, you know, it's always, I know I sound like a broken record, but with us it's always, can we find a way to defend better? Can we rebound the basketball? And, uh, and those two things, after those two things, you know, you know, hopefully we can work the other things out. It would be great to see some people at the game Thursday night. I mean, it's been the first. The students are back now. The snow's cleared up, and but it would it'd be great to see some people come to the game on Thursday night because uh, you know it's 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 a fun team. I think we only got five home games left, right? I believe so. Yeah. So it'd be great to see some people come out to the game and uh, you know have some fun. Seven o'clock tip at the Max Sports Complex, Coach. Thanks so much for the time. Thanks for having me. This has been the WB Mason Coaches Report right here on GoHofstra.com.